Hello, this is Mr. McGovern, and welcome back to the second video in the series on simple harmonic motion. So in this video, we're going to uh, look at some force diagrams of a spring, a mass on a spring bouncing up and down, and we're going to use that to refine our definition of simple harmonic motion. And you notice how I've abbreviated simple harmonic motion to SHM. You'll see that quite a lot moving forward. So assume we've got a mass, you can see the two masses there, connected to a spring, and it's hanging motionless. So it's hanging motionless, it's not accelerating. We know the net force on something that's not accelerating is zero. So if I asked you to draw the force diagram, hopefully you would find something like this. So we redraw force diagrams as a dot, and the obvious force to put on the mass is first is the force of gravity going down. And there must be a force being applied by the spring to the masses, and that's the tension force. Those two should be equal to each other, because we know that the object is, or the mass at this point is not accelerating. Now assume we take this mass and we pull it down below that point that I've marked with the dashed line there, and release it. So it starts bouncing up and down. So here it is pulled down, and it's just the instant it's been released. So the hand that pulled it down is no longer touching it. What would the force diagram look for, like that for that one? Gravity would be unchanged because the, the masses have been unchanged. But the tension force would be larger. And the reason of why this is the case is because the spring has been stretched out. It's under more tension, so it applies more tension to the masses. The total of this is obviously going to be upwards. And that's the symbol total, sigma, force. And I draw my total forces with a double arrowhead like that. So you know that they are a total force. So the total force on this one is upwards. Now a split second later, the spring's moving, or sprung, upwards. So here it is here. It's moved up from its bottom point. It's still moving. And this is what the force diagram looks like. I go back to the first one. And notice the tension gets smaller. The tension's smaller because the spring's not as stretched out. And when you find the, the total of these two forces, you find the total forces are smaller than before. Then it's still moving and it moves through its equilibrium point. This is the same as the first ever force diagram we had when it wasn't moving. It doesn't matter that it is moving. It's moving through that equilibrium point. The spring's under tension, but it's exactly the same as the gravity force downwards and we get a total force of zero. It's still springing and it's moving upwards now. It's now above the equilibrium point. The spring's under even less tension because it's a bit more compressed, so the tension force is smaller. Now the tension force is smaller than gravity, and so the total force is downwards because gravity is, is bigger than the tension force. And then we finally get to the highest point that it bounces up to, and the tension force is at its smallest point it can get. The total force now is, is downwards and it's going to be much bigger because gravity is much bigger than the tension force. So if we were to draw or look at all of those situations from on the left where the mass on the spring is pulled to its bottom point and let go and it's moving upwards upwards through the equilibrium point. The equilibrium point is, is the point at which if um, it wasn't pulled down it would just balance that all the way to its highest point and then down again to the lowest point the total forces would look like this. At the lowest point, there's a, a force up. As it's moving up, that force gets smaller. As it goes through the equilibrium point, the force is zero. Even though it's still moving upwards, above the equilibrium point, the force is down. It gets to its highest point, and the force is down again. And then it follows the same pattern. It's moving down, force is down through the equilibrium point. The um, force is zero through and below the equilibrium point, the force starts pointing upwards again. There's a pattern here, and the pattern is the total force in all these situations is always pointing back towards that equilibrium point, pointing back towards that dash line. The other pattern we see is that the further from the equilibrium point, the larger the total force. So if we look at the one on the far left, where it's as far away as it can get below the equilibrium point, the force upwards is quite big, Whereas as we get closer in the second one, that upwards force gets smaller. So from these force diagrams, we can adjust our definition of simple harmonic motion to be a bit more precise. So whereas in the first video we described it as bouncy thing or bouncy springs or swingy things, 
Our new definition is an object that has some sort of repeating motion and here the total force always points towards the equilibrium point position. This is what we showed with all our force diagrams and the total force is proportional to the distance from the equilibrium point. What that means is the further you got from the dashed lines, the bigger the force was. The smaller the distance to the dashed lines, the equilibrium point, the smaller the total force was. We can write that mathematically, although I'd rather you remember it in words. But if you are someone who loves maths, you might find it easy to remember mathematically. And this is what it looks like mathematically. So I'll read that out slowly. Total force, that's that funny E is total or sigma. Total force is proportional to, proportional is that um, symbol that looks like an alpha. Total force is proportional to negative y. Now y is displacement in simple harmonic motion. It measures the distance from the equilibrium point. And the reason it's negative is that as you move one way from the equilibrium point, say down below the equilibrium point, the force is pointing back up. And when you moved up above the equilibrium point, the force is moving back down. So once again, the total force is proportional to the displacement, and it's in the opposite direction. It always moves, points back towards the equilibrium point. That's why we have the negative.